the Jack Benny Program. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on this momentous occasion, we're broadcasting from the magnificent Civic Auditorium in historic city of San Francisco. San Francisco, known the world over for its luxurious buildings, its beautiful Golden Gate, its extensive harbor, its gigantic and impressive bridges. And by the time he gets to me, I won't mean a thing. <laughs> now I know how Berkeley feels. <laughs> so from this colorful city, we bring you that Yankee Doodle dandy, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, it certainly is thrilling to be here in San Francisco, a city that reminds me so much of Waukegan. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. I don't blame you for being proud of your hometown, but let's not be ridiculous. Ridiculous? Are you kidding, Don? Mention one thing that San Francisco has that Waukegan hasn't got. Well, uh, Waukegan doesn't have the bridges, the Golden Gate, Fisherman's Wharf, Paved streets, electric lights, department stores, <laughs> automobiles, bicycles, trees. Ha and... <laughs> ha! I knew if I let you go, you'd hang yourself. We've got bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> they may have high front wheels, but we've got them. <laughs> Nevertheless, I do agree with you, Don. San Francisco is a beautiful city. Ah, you bet it is, Jack. But a funny thing happened to me this morning when I was walking down Knob Hill. Walking down Knob Hill? Yes. When I got halfway down, I stopped to rest. And a traffic cop came over and made me point my toes into the curb. <laughs> well, you can't blame him, Don. If you ever started rolling, you'd flatten everything south of Market Street. <laughs> you know, when... When you're out for a stroll, you look like a walking plenary section. <laughs> You've got plenty of plenary there, brother, too, huh, man? And, Don, have you noticed how crowded it is here in San Francisco? It was just fortunate that I made my reservations eight months ago. Oh, well, then you were lucky, Jack. Where are you living, at the top of the mark? No, at the bottom of the Lancashire. <laughs> but it's really beautiful down there. You can look up and see the bay. You know? <laughs> of course, after five days, I... I had to give up my room, and I'm now living at the Claremont Hotel in Berkeley. You know, that's near Oakland. But, Jack, you come over to San Francisco so often with that toll bridge. Don't you find it rather expensive crossing the bay? Not at all, Don. It just happens that I brought my bathing suit with me. <laughs> you know. Huh? Well, Jack, isn't that a little dangerous? It wasn't until yesterday the Coast Guard came out after me. They thought I was a German submarine giving myself up. <laughs> I wouldn't have minded that so much, but they fired a shot across my bow. Fortunately, I was bowing at the time. <laughs> Hiya, Jackson. All right, folks, you're all in clover because Harris is here and the law is over. <laughs> Hey, Phil, how are you enjoying San Francisco? Oh, it's great, Donzie. This is really a pretty village, especially at night. When you're looking down at the city from the top of a tall building and all the colored lights are flashing on and off, gosh, it's beautiful. Looks just like a pinball machine. <laughs> oh, fine, comparing San Francisco to a pinball machine. Sure, Jackson, the whole town is tilted. <laughs> Tilted? Yeah, Frankie, my guitar player, says it's the first time he's ever been sober in the city cockeyed. <laughs> well, I hope the change wasn't too much of a shock to him. By the way, Phil, where are you and Frankie living? Well, we couldn't find the room, Jackson, so we've been spending all our time up the top of the mark. Oh, that must be beautiful. Yeah, what a view. On a clear day, you can see the bar. <laughs> I know, I know. And say, Jackson, you want to hear something cute? Why? Well, last night, Frankie had a couple of drinks. And you know those big turntables they have at the end of the cable car line? You mean those turntables that revolve the ca uh, they revolve the cable cars on? Yeah, well, Frankie kept watching them all one night. Then huh? finally he walked over to the conductor and said, Listen, chum, I've been here for seven hours. When are you going to put on one of Crosby's records? <laughs> Well, Phil, I can understand Frankie standing there for seven hours. What were you doing there? I was waiting for that's what I like about the South. <laughs> well, Phil, all I can say... Well, here comes our little songbird. Hello, Larry. Hello, Mr. Benny.
Larry, I was looking for you all week to find out what you're going to sing today. Where are you living? Oh, I'm at the Sir Francis Drake. I have a lovely room overlooking. A room overlooking what? I don't know. It hasn't got a window. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's so crowded here, they probably stuck you in a broom closet. Go ahead, kid, let's have your song. Come on, let's have it. I see stars in your Someday I'd like Hello, to... Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Someday I'd like to... Wait a minute, you're not Mary. No, I'm Rita Hayworth. Oh, Rita Hayworth. <laughs> well, Rita, this is certainly a surprise. What are you doing here? Well, Jack, I stopped in to visit Mary at her hotel, and she had a very bad cold. Oh, yes. I bet I know how she caught that cold. She crossed the bay with me and didn't bring a towel. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I know that Mary would have been thrilled to be here. She really well, wouldn't. Anyway, Jack, Mary asked me to come over here and take her place. Well, that's awfully sweet of you, Rita, and naturally, I don't expect you to do this for nothing. I suppose Mary told you that I'll pay you the same salary that I'm paying her. Yes, but I came anyway. <laughs> Oh, Rita, you little vixen, you. But no kidding, I'm so glad you're here because, well, I wanted to tell you that I've often... In fact, I... No, I better not say it. Huh? <laughs> what is it, Jack? You can tell me. No, you'll only think I'm a silly kid. No, I won't, I promise. Well, okay, I'll confess, Rita, that I, little Jack Benny, have often dreamed about you. Why, I think that's sweet. Oh, but Jack, when you dreamed about me, did you ever dream that I'd be on your program? No, I always kept business out of it. <laughs> uh, say, Rita, while you're here in San Francisco, where are you staying, in Berkeley or Oakland? Oh, I have a very nice room right here at the Palace Hotel. The Palace Hotel? Right here in town? Yes. Well, imagine getting a room right... What have you got that I haven't got? Mm. Nothing, nothing, but I'm supposed to walk that way. <laughs> got 
that over with a bang, kid. No. Oh, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Hayworth, I want to tell you how much I enjoyed your latest Columbia musical tonight and every night. I thought you were wonderful in it. Thank you, Don. Oh, yes, I saw it, too. And by the way, Rita, I have a picture playing here in San Francisco this week. It's called The Horn Blows at Midnight, and it's doing terrific business. Yes, I know, Jack, but uh, don't you think you're unfair trying to cash in on Bing Crosby's reputation? Well... Imagine changing the title from The Horn Blows at Midnight to Blowing My Way. <laughs> well, I know what I'm doing, sister. I'm a businessman, you know. Well, Jack, if you're such a businessman, why did you jip the cable car company out of their fare? What do you mean, jip? I saw you on Powell Street. Huh? When you thought no one was looking, you walked out in the middle of the street, got down on your knees, stuck your finger in the slot, hooked it around the cable, and let it pull you up the hill for nothing. <laughs> Oh, I just did that for a gag. You know, people expect me to be funny. Hey, Jack, and after the show, I got a little spot and we'll, uh... Hey, who's this happy little bundle of Technicolor? <laughs> okay, okay. Rita, I'd like you to meet whispering Phil Harris. <laughs> Hello, Phil. Oh, brother, all this in a salary, too. This is it. I bet if she ever walked into the conference, she'd be whistled at in 46 different languages. <laughs> Well, you know, Rita, the minute I seen you, I knew you were my type. Slow so. down, Phil. She's married. She's married to Orson Welles. Who's he? <laughs> Rita, you tell him. Well, my husband is an actor, a writer, a director, a producer, a columnist, and a commentator. Well, if he's that busy, what am I worried about? <laughs> Don't mind him, Rita. He just came with the band. The union says you gotta have one. Oh, he doesn't bother me, Jack. And I think I'd better be running along now. See you later. Wait a minute, Rita. What's your rush? Where are you going? Well, I've got to hurry over to the Bay Bridge. And there's such a crowd there, I want to get a place close to the rail. Close to the rail? Why? Well, I understand every afternoon... Some eccentric fellow swims across the bay. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> well, it takes all kinds of people to make a world. <laughs> anyway, Rita, thanks very much for coming over. Now, I'm sure Mary appreciates it, too. Goodbye. So long, Jack. Ah, it was nice of her to come over and leave Orson all by himself. And now... <laughs> you like that one, Orson? And now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, as an added attraction, we have another surprise for you. A very dear friend of mine who has entertained the boys overseas in both theaters of war and is preparing to go again. The world's greatest harmonica player, Larry Adler. Thank <laughs> you. 
City Americana, played by Larry Adler. Larry, that was wonderful. Thank you, Jack. You pronounced it so well, too. Jack, we certainly had a lot of fun on, on those overseas trips, didn't we? We sure did. And, Larry, when you played your harmonica, the boys really went for it. I know, Jack. And when you played your violin, the boys really went. Hmm. I'd answer that, but I have another important introduction to make. Oh, who are you going to introduce now, Jack? The governor of California. You mean the governor's here? Yes. What have we done now? Nothing. And now, one of the honored guests here, Governor Earl Warren. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Jack. Gosh, Governor, I'm so excited. You know, this is the first time I've ever had a governor on my program. I don't know how to act. I mean, I, I don't know what to do. Well, for one thing, stand up. You don't have to curtsy. Oh, oh, oh I didn't know. <laughs> well, Jack, I just want to tell you how happy we are to have you here in San Francisco at this time. I did meet one very important person who really knows what it's all about. In fact, I had lunch with him twice. His name is Mr. Dyer. Edward Dyer. Edward J. Dyer? Yes. Do you happen to know him? Well, I should. He's my chauffeur. <laughs> Well, he's a, he's a lovely fellow. Anyway, Governor, it's been a great pleasure to be here in San Francisco, and my cast and I feel highly honored having been asked to appear on this program. <laughs> Goodbye, Governor. Goodbye, Jack. Oh, my goodness. What's the matter, Jack? I meant to ask the governor to come to the big reception I'm giving in my honor tonight. You know, um, Mayor Lapham is going to be there, too. Mayor Lapham? Yeah, he's the one who wears those zoop neckties, you know. Oh. Those things. <laughs> well, I'll get in touch with the governor later, and I'm sure he'll... There's the phone. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Bay. This is Ron Chester. <laughs> Hello, Rochester. What is it? Oh, 
wanted to let you know that everything is all set for the reception you're giving tonight. Well, I hope you explained it was absolutely free. Uh-huh. And I also explained that you'd have a plate by the door in case any, in case they wanted to show their appreciation. Rochester, that plate is there for calling cards. It never was before. <laughs> Well, I'll talk to you about that later. Will you be home when I get there? Da! <laughs> all right, all right. Goodbye. You've been listening to the Jack Benny Program with Phil Harris, Larry Stevens, Roger.